The Super Mario Bros. movie is an animated film produced by Universal Studios in collaboration with Nintendo, animated by Illumination and directed by four people. Aaron Horvath, Michael Jelinek, Pierre Ledoc, and Fabien Pollard. Up to this day, it has stopped more than 800 million US dollars in worldwide box office. It is also the highest grossing animated film in the opening weekend ever. If you're into video games, you might have heard the news already, and to be honest, it's quite astonishing to finally get some recognition to video games adaptation. Not that there aren't any, there were amazing video game adaptations before, but this one hit the mark for real. And how does that success relate to the overall quality of the film? Well, I'm Leo S. Luna, and now that pretty much a lot of people have seen it and memorized all the arguments visually with the amount of memes that have been released, I'm here to talk about it with some hot takes in an unscripted format starting now. Starting with the positive things, I'm going to first highlight the visuals, which is to me the most important thing here. Art direction is beautiful. It looks original, even though it's highly inspired on the material, on video games, on the Super Mario Bros. franchise. It really has his distinctive look, you know, similar to the Spickable Me movies and, and Minions and Sing. They have their specific like reactions and emotions to things and the particle effects, the texture, everything is their unique seal of quality, which deviates pretty much from other works such as Mario plus Rabbids, which is a, a new piece of game, but it's very similar to the original art style, but this one looks unique. You see this, and this is Illumination's Mario. You see that? It's Nintendo's Mario, so kudos to that. And they really, really invested a lot of time investigating, and or probably there are there were already video game fans, writers and animators and such. If you played every Mario video game, you can notice that there are references, starting from Super Mario Bros. from NES, up to Super Mario Odyssey. Like, there are a lot of things. Super Mario Galaxy 64, the RPG series, uh, of course, Mario Kart, and many other video games. And of course, those side-scrolling sequences were amazing. Kudos to that, and also kudos to how the characters are being portrayed, you know? Mario is this cocky, character like the protagonist that can do it all that can be everything but then of course he thrives and and it's it's in a simple way you know but but it works and it's very similar to how he behaves on the super mario rpgs and luigi is his is, is luigi in luigi's mansion like this scared little guy in this case very afraid to act by himself with Mario's absence. So that really resonates with me and resonates a lot with the original character. And I like that Charlie Day does an amazing job, such as Chris Pratt, which it doesn't felt any like obnoxious at all. Like Mario really sounds like a normal human being. I really liked how he sounds. Of course, we're not going to have Charles Marinette talking. At least he got some part the same way as John DiMaggio, if you have heard him, he's, I think it's Uncle Arthur. Kind of funny that Hollywood always have veterans in secondary roles for these feature films and they have like <laughs> famous actors as protagonists, you know, like Chris Pratt, Anna Taylor-Joy, Jack Black, etc. Anna Taylor-Joy is fantastic as Peach. I think it's one of my favorite characters from the movie. It's funny because and a lot of people picture like Peach, this character that gets kidnapped by Bowser and also gets rescued by Mario. But but she is she is really like a very strong character. She's already have the initiative to act on things. And I really like the idea that she's defending this mushroom kingdom she knows it all or tries to help as much as she can and she even teaches mario to do that which by the way it's very reminiscent to what we've seen in the 
all comic books from Nintendo Power. If you remember that, it's like she has the initiative all the time and she acts and she participates and she fights. And it also, it's very similar to video games too. In Super Mario Bros. 2, she's in there and the new Super Mario Bros. video game. So kudos to that, like they really know their stuff. And Toad, it's amazing with her giant car. It's fantastic, which by the way, the Mario Kart scene is one of my favorite scenes in that movie. Yeah, I really like the acting and the and the references. It seems they wanted to focus a lot on the 80s, you know? Let's say the 80s and a, as an alternate universe, because you can see like Luigi has a, a phone with touch screen. So it's kind of strange at the same, but at the same time, I really like it. In a universe where they still play NES games and have a lot of fandom by all games like uh, Kid Icarus, F-Zero, because Mario has a poster of the Blue Falcon from Captain Falcon, but I'm not sure if it's a series or it's, it's a video game. And there's an Awin from Star Fox as well. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'll say two of the strongest references that I really love, which is it's the Pixaria. I guess it's a trainer of Little Mac from Punch Out, and I really like that they have a whole setup in the background. Like he already win like a title, and he helped maybe Little Mac or maybe anyone else that I, I, I don't remember, but pretty much like the concept for another movie. And the same goes to Donkey Kong, which is pretty much the, we, we've we seen the whole realm of Donkey Kong, which I didn't know it was next to Mushroom Kingdom, I guess, let's say MCU, Mario Cinematic Universe. <laughs> and I really love the, the first presentation of that donkey just being destroyed on a building <laughs> while well, they are introducing Peach and Mario to the Donkey Kong world. I really like that. And there's a, there's the perfect setup for a movie, for sure. And let's see, let's talk about the negatives. I like Jack Black. I like a lot of his act, his performance in most of the films. And I really like his voice acting career, like starting with Kung Fu Panda and then going to Psychonauts 2, which is an amazing performance. He has a great song over there. It's a video game, by the way, Psychonauts 2. But this one, I, I liked his acting as Bowser. It's amazing. But I did not like his song a lot. Like, it, it's not even a song. It's just a rhyme that it's catchy, it's perfect for an Instagram post or a TikTok, whatever, but it's any good at all. And speaking about the music in general, I, I, I did not like it. I, I did not like the decisions and the editing of the music more than the music itself. Like for example, licensing music, it's too distracting so much distracting that I was like, okay, where am I? Like, I know this is alternate 80s, but these are very generic songs. Like, they, I like I am a hero. I, I've, I've done with that song. I don't want to hear them anywhere in any movie or any show. <laughs> and, uh, and the score, the original score, which is based on the original IP, it's really good. But the problem is that it doesn't show up like that much. It's like 10 seconds of the famous tune you remember, and then it, it's gone. Like it, there, there's no time, there's no construction with the scene and cohesion with the music, you know? It's just there for reference, nothing else. I'm pretty sure that the original score is amazing. Like whenever that pops out, uh, Man, I wish I just wish I could listen to it more. And it's not, it's not present, you know. Yes, maybe the the, the Bowser song is is famous, but not necessarily good. And I have to talk about the least favorite thing for me. It definitely has to be narrative. Like narrative is extremely shallow and safe, and it really affects the pacing of the movie. Like you do not get to empathize with these characters too much if you don't know them. And I think the movie, every movie, regardless of if you know the character 
like for a long time ago, that character has to earn his spot in the movie regardless. Like you have to know why you're interested in that, why you have to invest two hours in this character, but they're just there presented. One time they're in New Donk or New York City and the other time in Mushroom Kingdom and the other time saving the princess and and blah, 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 blah. And there, there's no time to settle down with them excepting for one part with Peach. There's no character developer in the same way I, I'm expecting from DreamWorks or Pixar movies, you know? And you can say, oh, it's because it's a movie for children. It's because it's a Mario game what would you expect from from a mario game they don't have a story well first off every time that you create a video game you need to have a storyboard regardless if you see any story or not and second just because it is a kids movie it doesn't have to be bad you know there are a lot of pixar movies that are amazing and they are interesting stories did you get attached to the characters you know but here I have the feeling that if you if you did not grow up with Mario and Luigi or Peach, you simply couldn't care less. You could care more about Shrek <laughs> if you grew up with Shrek instead of Disney. And I don't know, it's just an example. But what I mean is that they pretty much do not focus a lot on the narrative and they distract you a lot with references every 15 to 1 minute. I don't know, they just try to make as much references for people to make TikToks and Instagram references. And I, I did not like that much. Like, it's, it's as if they felt that the narrative was getting short. And I'm not sure if that was an intention of Nintendo. And the other thing related to the narrative, like, oh, it's Mario. Um, Well, first off, there's a lot of Mario RPGs that really tell compelling stories and in this case the thing that is that the movie has to tell a story has to tell an interesting and compelling beginning to end story whether it is visual whether it is narratively in video games you have the wild card that it's a video game like it doesn't matter if it has a story you you have the gameplay in the game and if the gameplay is fun it's okay for the video game, unless it is a narrative adventure for sure. They're, these are more tied up to a compelling story, you know. But a movie, that's the only resource, man. Like, like you have to build a compelling story for the characters to be interesting, at least. You don't, like, in when, when Spider-Man movies were released in 2001, like, they Spider-Man has to earn the spot. In the, in the Hollywood industry. They have to be good characters. And they did. And Sam Raimi thought their new, their vision of Spider-Man, you know, that's that's a good example of how you do it. But here in Mario is just too shallow. And it keeps me, keeps me worrying because I don't want every Nintendo franchise to have this format. I don't want to have Metroid or The Legend of Zelda in the same style of format. It will be amazing to have like a Ghibli, Studio Ghibli, The Legend of Zelda inspired, but I guess that's a lot. And maybe like the Donkey Kong and Punch Out could be a better fit for Illumination, and obviously the second Super Mario Brothers too. But I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Would you would you think this movie will be more as memorable for your kids uh, in the same way that? Toy Story or The Beauty and the Beast? Let me know in the comments and let me know also in the comments what do you, what do you think of the movie? What mo what video game and movie reference did you catch? I'm not gonna talk about those here a lot because there are already a thousand of videos and, and articles about. But in general, that's it. That this uh, this is my opinion. Like I I wish I would have loved this movie. And regardless, it's breaking records probably at the time of publishing this. It's going to hit like 1 billion and worldwide box office. But, and I'm so happy for that. But I'm not gonna like go blind into it just because it's married. It's similar to the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie that released. It's, 
it's it's in the same way that yeah this this story is kind of shallow but at least there's comedic moments that are good oh man the jokes in super mario movie are kind of lame and at least in sonic the characters there's some development you get to see like jim carrey for the first for the first time in years and it's amazing well these are my thoughts don't forget to like share and subscribe and of course share this to a friend that maybe really likes the movie and want to see another an opinion that is you know different than theirs or maybe a person that agreed on me on this like it's it's not that good or not that it's whatever like however you like however you feel leave it in the comments i'm leo s luna and if you like this style of format of movies of movie reviews here with my humble connection just make sure to let me know in the comments i don't want to talk a lot about movies because this is more video game oriented but be sure that I can. Like, I love movies the same way as video games. So, I'm Leo S. Luna, and catch you until the next time.